Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? Ed's Filthy and we're back with another video. Today we're going to show you how to find as many Angelic Crucibles in Diablo 3 Season 27 uh, as fast as possible. So you'll be able to sanctify as many items as you want. You'll be able to play lots of different builds and lots of different classes, all with different sanctified items if you need. You'll be able to sanctify every single puzzle ring you find to run an Ancient's Greed Realm if you want. Uh, and coincidentally, this will also show you how to get the maximum number of primals you can possibly find, and also as many petrified screen keys, so you can do those echoing nightmares and get all of your builds augmented. It's the same kind of principle across all three things. Uh, before we do jump in though, as always guys, a thumbs up uh, really does brighten my day. Now, this guide is probably not going to be very useful if you're a really experienced player. You're probably going to know everything that I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to talk briefly about the mechanics of the game, how items work in the game, uh, and then kind of show you my two cents on uh, how to find as many as possible, is it worth it, and that kind of thing. We'll talk a little bit about Echo Nightmares as well, um, because there's a bit of community discussion about uh, what you should be doing with these and how you should be running them. But starting off, obviously with Season 27, we've got the Angelic Crucibles. These are just an item in the game. It can drop everywhere. So whether you're doing bounties, rifts, greater rifts, it doesn't matter. The game will basically, whenever it drops you an item, give you a very small percentage chance that it's going to be a crucible. I found loads this season, about 1500 Paragon. I must have used at least or at least 50 uh, of these things so far. Um, so they do pop out quite frequently, but you can maximize your chances. Uh, maybe if you don't have quite so much play time, um, or maybe uh, you just want to find some because Something like the Impale Quiver, the Demon Hunter, um, I still do not have a nice one uh, because I'm still running my Carlay's Point um, with the Sanctified Power on it. And if you wanted to go up and do uh, a Holy Point shot, you're going to need 50 to 100 of these things potentially to get this perfect because it needs the correct element roll, it needs the correct rolls on it. Um, so, you know, I do think there is a value in having a lot of these sanctified crucibles so they're just an item you can get them anywhere the petrified screams are a little bit different the keys these legendary keys you can only find at the end of a greater rift you can't find them in bounties you can't find them in nephilim rifts but again principle is the same when you get to the end of a greater rift the game will drop you a bunch of items small chance on each single item that it's going to be a crucible small sing, sing, small blah, 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 blah. easy for me to say small chance that it's going to be a petrified scream uh, at the end of the Greater Rift. So again, you can find two of these, you can find three of these in a Rift. Um, extremely unlikely, um, but that's just how it is. And we all love to see the red beams, and again, every time the game drops an item, you know you might get yourself a lovely Blackthorn Surcoat Primal. Um, again, it's just a small percentage chance. So there's nothing you can do to target farm any of this. You can't play Act 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. Um, you just simply have to get as many items as you can because that's the only thing you can control. So the more items you can find in a play session, the more chance you can have crucibles, the more chance you can have primals. And because the best way to find items is actually greater rifts, it's also going to give you the best number of petrified screams. So if you're doing public bounties up here in Sanctuary, your drop rate is pretty miserable. You will find items, but you won't find them anywhere near as, as frequent. When you move up to do Nephilim Rifts and doing your keys, you'll notice a big jump. You'll find a lot more items. No Petrified Screams, as we say, but you'll get more Primals. You'll get more Crucibles. Again, not amazing, but it is better. The best way to find items is actually to do GR90. Uh, and the reason for this is that when you get to level 90, that is the maximum number of items you can find. So anything below 90, you're not getting the maximum number of drops at the end of the Rift. And as you go up 91... 92 all the way up to 150 if you've got that available to open it makes no difference you get the same loot at 150 as you do at 90 or anywhere in between you don't get better quantity loot you certainly don't get more um uh, you don't get better quantity you don't get better quality so nothing is different as far as the game is concerned doing gr90 doing gr136 for me is my max absolutely no different now it probably shouldn't work like that, but that's just how it how it is. So our goal really is to get 90 done as fast as possible, because that's going to give us the most number of items per hour 
because 90 is difficulty you can kind of smash. Now, I like to see a target of around about 90 seconds when doing this. So if you get an absolutely godly map, you might just be able to sneak under a minute. And a rubbish map, you might be straying a little bit more towards two minutes. But you want to get a build that's got really good AoE coverage. So like this UE Demon Hunter. And something that's really fast as well. So a lot of move speed. So I've gone Crimsons. I've decked it out with some resource cost reduction. Uh, I've decked it out with move speed from the Larceny. From the Ozekian Arm Guards. It's very similar to the key build, in fact, actually. Uh, that we did the other day uh, on the channel right right when the season launched. But we're basically just dropping the Hexing Pants and the Gold Wrap uh, Mantle of Channeling goes in the cube. And then we're putting on the Crimsons and we're stacking a little bit more toughness. Uh, but the idea really is, is that we're going to one-shot stuff. Um, now, passive-wise, I've been toying between Archer and Blood Vengeance. I think Blood Vengeance is probably going to be the way to go because realistically we want to keep this discipline figure nice and high. Um, but the idea is, is that we're going to use the Strafe Power, the Sanctified Item. Uh, we're going to activate Multi-Shot when we go in the Rift. Then we just simply pop Vengeance and hold down our uh, Drifting Shadow um, strafe the entire way to spit out free multi shots and we try and spam the abilities for move speed as much as we can but you do need to keep a little eye on your discipline uh, and it will uh, hopefully speaking stay up that's what she said uh, but yeah the idea is, is we're just trying to one shot everything as fast as possible uh, and the way the game works is, is the further along that purple progress bar is the more chance we have of spawning a pylon. When you find a pylon, uh, that chance resets and you need to kill more monsters to find another pylon. So a nice map like this should give a really high chance of a uh, of, of, of a spawn. Doesn't look like it's happened this time uh, because otherwise you might be able to clear something like this in one floor. And then you're looking to kind of flip the pylon into another pylon. So I'm going to kill these monsters before opening up the map. Uh, like so. I'm hoping maybe there's another pile on somewhere. Because if you can one clear something like this, then you are talking about uh, hopefully a 60 second Ishii type 1. Uh, there was another yellow here. It's a bad look for me. Only one pile on uh, on this map. But we'll see what the next floor has. And then there we go, straight away. Bang. So, and as you can see, we're going to do this, I guess, 90 seconds ish. Uh, maybe this would have been a one minute clear, which would have been nice for the video. And Guardian is back here. So, one minute 45. So, kind of around about that 90 seconds, a little slower. Um, as I say, that's what you're kind of looking for, a kind of 90 second average, really. And this will just allow us to get uh, the most number of items. So we did actually get a Crucible then, I think, did we? Did I see one? Yes, we did. Uh, so proof of concept, uh, which is pretty good. Now, you are coming in with a really significant XP penalty here. Um, you know, the XP from a GR90 is really low compared to a higher GR. So that becomes a question for you. Do you want to find as many crucibles as possible or do you want to get XP? Uh, you know, and realistically, there's probably a balance somewhere between the two. I'm going to hang on to this patterns of justice piece because that is going to be very handy uh, for making a monk. So I'm up to two for that. Now, a build that I like a lot uh, that is a little bit slower. Uh, so this doesn't, I don't think, have the power to do a GR90 uh, or sorry, a GR 105 in like 90 seconds, but it can do a GR 105 um, in, again, a fairly fast time. Now, you might have seen this build. I think Snail came up with it. Uh, I saw it on Rax's channel. It is basically the DH, the Shadow and Pale, which is obviously the main, main build we're using to crush the XP this season. Uh, I've adapted it slightly. I've put in the Stone of Jordan uh, because I really like just the consistent damage. And I've, again, using the Larceny Ring to try and proc some more move speed. Uh, and yeah, this is this is a build without a generator. Uh, 
and this will be a little bit slower but personally uh, I would probably go uh, with something like this because you're still going to get an okay-ish amount of XP. It's still not the same as like doing 118s uh, which I think with my Guardian set on you know, maybe I'll be crunching those out in like three, three and a half minutes. Um, maybe up to 120s for like kind of the longer end of that three minutes. But you get a lot more XP doing it that way. But if you think about it with the multi-shot Demon Hunter as an example, uh, you can get like two runs in uh, in the same time. So that's twice the amount of items. So even though the XP is a lot lower, you're going to get more stuff. Now, funnily enough, the further you go into the season, uh, the more viable I think almost it is to do the 90 strategy because each point of Paragon does have diminishing returns. If you want to really get to 2k, 2.5k, 3k Paragon, then obviously you can't afford to spend much time doing GR90 item farming. But if, let's say, you're happy to get to 1500 and say, well, that's all that I want, um, then again, it, it's probably better to uh, simply just blast the GR90s because the extra Paragons later on have a smaller impact uh, and you might benefit from finding kind of better gear. Another benefit of this method and doing these things like insanely fast is you get a lot of blood shards so you can target farm uh, pieces. This is great for your current build if you've got anything that is outstanding. You possibly have much more efficient use of time than spending it in bounties uh, which whilst they do allow you to reforge items and redrop their stats with the Kanai's cube uh, basically take uh, you, know, you don't get as many items, you don't get XP, you don't get gem levels so ultimately, bounties are something that I try and avoid uh, if I can. So as you can see, 15 tiers higher on this one, a little bit, uh, a little bit slower, uh, more in the kind of two minute range. But, you know, that probably decent ish run for this one, kind of about that for average, about two minutes. Um, so again, it depends whether you want to go for the 90s or not. Now, another couple of things to talk about in terms of finding crucibles are the Puzzle rings are quite a good use of them. Uh, I would pretty much sanctify any puzzle ring. Whenever I'm out of gold, I'll go and do a couple of uh, puzzle ring runs. So I'm just keeping every single puzzle ring I find this season, sanctifying them, uh, and then popping it into the cube. And that'll give you some gold find. What I'm finding in doing the Ancient Greed Realm runs is I've done, I've done a video on what you can expect to get. Roughly each one has got two augments worth of gems in it. You know, a decent amount of gold depending on your character's gold find uh, and some other bits and bobs but I think about one in three times you're going to get your crucible back you're going to find an ancient crucible uh, in that run so again you don't need to worry too much about upgrading your puzzle rings uh, you will get some return on the crucibles for that now the last thing I think I want to talk about is the petrified screams um, echoing nightmares there is a bit of an argument now that because the XP has been so significantly reduced, there's no point in going past uh, level 125 because your augment gem taps out at 125. So provided you clear 126 and get tapped out at wave 126 in Echoing Nightmare, you get the max reward, uh, which is this gem at 125. I just about to say it past my fat head. But I personally think it is worth carrying on until Goblin Shrine. That will spawn anywhere kind of, I think, after about 1 to 120, 125, it can spawn as late as like 155. It always spawns, it is a guaranteed thing, I think. Uh, you just have to keep going high enough. And I'll say, if you get lucky, it's early. If you're unlucky, it's late. I do think it's worth going for the Goblin Shrine. A couple of reasons. Uh, one, you can get the blue Genatalus Goblins in there. It does lag the game out like crazy. But they drop just an absolute crap ton of items. Crap. They drop a crap ton of gems. You can get the gem goblins in there as well. Um, and ultimately, you're just going to get a, an absolute bunch of items. Uh, and the second thing is, is if you're grouping in Echoing Nightmares, um, or, you're, or you've got a follower and you're doing it solo, you'll have access to the Broken Crown, and you'll just get so many gems uh, doing this. So I've run a bunch of Echoing Nightmares, and I've got an absolute stack of flawless royal gems uh, just from upgrading what I found in there. So I'd play a Z barb in there when I go if I can. I have a broken crown in my cube. I get double the amount of gems uh, and I kind of 
multiply my keys by four because I'm with three other people. We all take a turn pumping one in. Uh, and it also does yield a decent amount of crucibles because when those blue goblins explode, they drop like a loop pinata explosion. You know, not dissimilar to an ancient puzzle ring room. Um, you don't get gold, but aside from that, it's it's not that dissimilar popping the, bond, the bandit shrine and defeating it. So I personally do carry on for that. So again, another good way of finding items. No Echoing Nightmare keys in the Echoing Nightmare system. They're only GRs for the last time. But you can find primals. Again, you get your chest at the end. It's got some items in. So that's kind of how I approach trying to find as many of these things as possible. Um, so let's say I'm looking to do as many Angelic Crucibles as possible. I really do get short and run dry at some point. I'll consider uh, getting my GR90 Blaster build out uh, and powering myself up. Um, I might consider doing some 105s in like two minutes uh, and just try to flip through things as fast as possible. Uh, this is allowing me to power up lots of characters. So you can park a character at 70 and then go and spend your blood shards uh, in between runs. If you want to power up something like an alt wizard, just roll orbs and then you can convert them in the cube. Get yourself a Talrasha build going. Uh, same for Witch.Demojo, you can give the Zuni Massa. Uh, you could get uh, offhands for Necro. And if you're not playing DH, you can roll Quivers, things like that. So lots of blood shards, uh, lots of items, lots of fun. Uh, and hopefully speaking, this guide has helped uh, and you will allow you to find some more stuff. I'll try and put a D3 planner link to both of these builds uh, in the description. I'll link the T16 video for you to watch on the UE. Um, but yeah. Just be efficient, don't stand around town for a long time, just keep flipping these 90s. Uh, you know, make sure you get yourself a decent amount of keys. Flip 90 over and over and over again uh, if you just want the max number of items. If you want a bit of a blend of XP, uh, I probably would settle at something like 105. Um, maybe, maybe going up a little bit further to 110. Um, but again, it, it's all a question of what's more important to you, the XP or the items, blood shards, gem levels and all that kind of stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. I've been the Filthy Casual. Take it easy, guys. Peace.